I knew when I got the call to do this movie that Sonic was a game. <laughs> I think I had played it once or twice, uh, and after I got the call, I started playing it with my grandson, who humiliated me constantly. And uh, the really fun part was I got to see how smart he was, how clued in he was, and these games have turned kids into jet pilots. I mean, they're quick, and uh, their reflexes are awesome. And uh, he likes to trash talk a lot. He's nine years old, and he trash talks me. I, I, I get angry, I put money in the swear jar, and uh, I'm actually a lot like Robotnik <laughs> when we play. I think that Sonic represents the power of innocence, the power of play, the, you know, the, the, uh, the electricity in a, in a pure soul who just is doing his life because there is fun to be had, you know? And that's my philosophy about life in, in the first place. You have to find something to do in life that not only serves people, but serves you in your heart, makes you feel like a child, makes you go, you know, I, I get to wake up every day and do what I love. And that's, you know, that's the dream for everybody, you know? The wonderful thing about Robotnik is he is analogous to a lot of the insane ego that's running us, you know, in all different kinds of realms of life. Uh, the greed, the avarice, the self-centeredness, uh, the self-dealing, uh, the lack of a conscience, you know, that we see in a lot of different realms. Robotnik signifies that. He is a madman with a triple-digit IQ. And, um, you know, like a lot of those good folks, uh, those clever genius types in uh, Silicon Valley, that's not a microchip on his shoulder, you know? That's a quantum database of bitterness. And uh, he hates society because he wasn't nurtured, he wasn't loved, and this is what happens to a genius like that when they have no nurturing, no love, no guidance. And that's what he's become the epitome of that. He hates the world because the world abandoned him. And I, th I see him as somebody who wants to be the warden of a mechanized prison that captures the consciousness of the world. And Sonic is a power that he needs because if you control the power grid, you control the world. He's a wonderful character to play. And uh, of course, he's a 300 IQ, so it took me a week and a half to prepare. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just wonderful. And it, all it really comes down to is he wants to be special to somebody, you know? Only it's gone megalomania for him. He wants to be special to everyone. In fact, he wants to be the king of everyone. And, you know, another thing he really, really wants is to be able to get a latte the way he wants it. With Austrian goat's milk. Robotnik is a little tiny piece of nothing in his own mind, and he's blown himself into gigantuan proportions. Uh, he is as smart as heck, you know, he is the smartest one in the room, but there's, a, there's smart, and then there's spiritually dumb, <laughs> you know? And uh, I'm sure you could take a lot of the smartest people and, and put them in a room, and when it comes to life, they can't carry water, you know? Uh, and that's kind of it. You know, he lives through his invention. He wants to capture the world and the world's consciousness and control humanity with his machines. And of course, we're not dealing with any of that, are we? So I think, uh, I think I'm kind of right in the zeitgeist with this character. I just dealt with him as, a, as a, an ego out of control, as somebody who believes themselves completely separate from the rest of the world. And so he must conquer those who, uh, who betrayed him. It's wonderful to be able to physicalize that evil, that self-centeredness, that constantly acting as if there's a spotlight on you, you know, and everybody's really interested in what you have to say. And if they're not, they must be banished, you know. Uh, I, think, I think that it became a physical dance, and that's why we had that kind of weird dance sequence in it. It's uh, very edgy, and the music, Evil Grows was something I heard when I was a child 
And I, I said to Jeff, what about that song, Evil Grows? You know, evil grows in cracks and holes and lives in people's minds. You know, evil grows in the dark. And uh, it's uh, kind of a cool song that I grew up with, but I didn't know if it was big in America or anything like that. And they all knew the song. I guess it was a hit everywhere. And they said, oh, we'll throw that on, see what happens. And it was perfect. It was just the perfect thing for Robotnik. And at the same time, we found out shooting in Vancouver that it was a Vancouver band that had recorded, had written and recorded the song. And so it was just really cool kismet, you know? We brought that back from, uh, from the Netherlands. I'm just having so much fun, honest to God. It's, it's a great, fun part to do. And you get in the gizmos and the gadgets and stuff and fly around in that ship and they've got that on a crane and they're manipulating it and stuff and you're just kind of got to imagine the whole thing. It's, it's a real blast. I, I really liked it, really enjoyed it. They were a great, great bunch, great bunch, wonderful, creative uh, group of people and uh, everybody was open. And, you know, I make tons of mistakes, so I don't, uh, I don't have any problem with people making mistakes. And I, I do think it's a collective thing. And the more fun you generate on that set, the more fun comes through the camera and, and uh, arrests the people who are watching. So to me, a movie like this is silly fun, you know. There are themes in it that are kind of interesting and serious in a way. But, you know, James Marsden, not only a good-looking guy, just a good guy. A good guy, down deep, real good guy, creative, open, and uh, Tika Sumter was just lovely and willing to jump into anything, and she was she was fantastic to be with, and uh, Ben Schwartz is just a funny guy, really creative, and uh, so having him be the voice is really uh, really a catch, really a catch.